So we're, we're very privileged to have people who've flown from as far away in the world as you can get from here to here to be with us today. And uh, I'm going to load the, the latest version of the presentation. Um, Dr. Dr. Zhang will be our first speaker. He is professor and director of the Department of High Technology Development and Industrialization at the Ministry of Science and Technology in, uh, in, in China. Uh, and is one of the uh, lead uh, regulators for RFID, who we've heard here throughout two days from, in many cases, from companies looking at how do we, how do we integrate RFID, what do we want to do with RFID in our companies. And so he's, he's got an even larger beast to, to wrestle with. So we're very privileged to have him with us. Does anybody know the password on this machine? Password is the same as the username, AV Redwood. And I think the cable needs to get closer on the right side. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Zhang. Thank you, Steve. <coughs> yeah, I would like to take this opportunity to say several words for, um, for RFID in China. So I think a lot of people um, pay more attention to um, or our country, how to use RFID. So I think this is uh, several reasons. The one is the, uh, the China is the largest population in the world. So also, yeah, maybe this is an old vision. This old vision, not, not new vision. Oh, this is the old version? Yeah, the old oh, version. Okay, we have a new version. <laughs> So I think. Yeah, I, uh, at first I want to introduce some of the uh, so several words for our ministry. Our ministry is a science and technology ministry. And they are focused on the research and uh, set forth and uh, micro strategic for science and technology development, as well as the uh, gathering uh, uh, policies and uh, uh, regulations for science and technology. 
and also to the uh, conduct research on key issues related to the uh, uh, promotion of economic and society development of science and technology. Also to research and uh, determine to major development and uh, priority areas for science and technology development and also to promote the uh, building of the uh, national science and technology innovation system and uh, improve the uh, national science and technology innovation capacity. So I think a uh, lot of people um, look at the uh, China, how to develop RFID the application because this is the uh, several region. The first reason is the, uh, the largest population and the largest uh, um, consumer market in the, in the world. So the second reason is the manufacturing center of the world and uh, also related to for the uh, biggest uh, the company in the world. So um, how to use the RFID also not only um, related with the uh, Chinese company, also for the uh, uh, foreign big company. And also, IT applications is just at the uh, beginning with much more um, potential to be explored. And this picture is uh, RFID market in 2004. And uh, RFID technology and applications have got the uh, promote development in the uh, last two years in China. And uh, recently, all, all of the, uh, everybody have a new ID, use the uh, RFID. So this uh, total, the market is uh, about uh, uh, 150 million US dollar. And the potential application in China market, uh, I think maybe in the, this several area. The, one is the uh, security and the safety. And also, it's very important the area is uh, uh, anti uh, counterfeit. For example, some of the uh, health, um, healthcare, tobacco, and uh, leak. And also, we are application the RFID, maybe in the logistics. And also for the manufact uh, manufacturing process management. And uh, also for the e-ticket system, and such as the uh, subway ticket. We already use it in Shanghai. And also, we will use it in Olympic Games in the 2008. And, uh, Shanghai World uh, Exposition um, in 2010. And also, we are developed this uh, RFID using the vehicle uh, management system. Uh, when the uh, vehicle pass the gate, they can show you the picture and the color, and you can find it. And also, um, we use it in the supply chain management. And this is the uh, um, harbor use the uh, RFID. So this is uh, um, container tricking. This is uh, located in Shanghai. And uh, recently we are, we are used the RFID, the tag, in Shanghai International Port Harbor. And uh, they connect with the uh, Another very important uh, harbor in Yantai, Shandong province. Up to now, they are already shipped more than 7,000 containers. They are still do the demo. <coughs> also, we are, we are already use it in the uh, fireworks management because it is uh, dangerous. Always take place some the uh, accident. And also, we have used the uh, RFID in the dangerous case management. So we put the uh, tag in the, the tanks. 
And also, we, are, we are used RFID uh, to management the animal and the food. And also, in Shanghai, we have put the uh, tag in, in the air of the dog, so we can find it. Um, they uh, put some um, illegal or only illegal. And also, we use it in the cold manner, location, and the tricking. So also in China, um, frequency take uh, uh, place some the uh, accident in a manner. So how to catch time to save the life? This is very important. So I think in the, I just uh, look at the TV. Uh, North Carolina also take place some the uh, accident. So I think this is uh, very popular in the near future. How to cope? application this uh, technology to save the sea life. And we are already give some the uh, pilot project for the post office. This is China based, um, post office use the uh, the tag put into the uh, mail bags in uh, for the EMS. The, this is uh, Shanghai use the uh, the po post office use the RFID. And this is a manufacturing process management um, for the, the um, um, product slam to manage the uh, each um, product point can control the, the product's quality. This is uh, China, the uh, RFID industry policy. One of the most important area in China, the national development planning and on the high tech area for the coming five years. So this is uh, a big program, program. And also make China RFID technology strategy and uh, policy. Funding RFID application to promote promote uh, the RFID technology and industry development. And uh, our ministry um, also uh, constitu constitute the China RFID technology weight paper, uh, work together with the uh, other 14 ministry or departments. Because you know, this kind of uh, application related with the uh, different ministry or different department. So we must work with them together to make the policy and make some standard. Also research and establish the architecture for the China RFID uh, standard, which connect with the uh, international standard and uh, accommodate the China uh, um, surrounding. And the set a special a specific uh, RFID program in national high-tech R&D program. This uh, 836 program established in March 1986. This is uh, reviewed by the uh, very famous uh, leader, Deng Xiaoping. So to speed up the progress of RFID research application and industrialization, and set up an RFID committee to make the national RFID research plan and fund RFID research and fund the RFID application and help local government to set up RFID research technology and industrial, industrial zone. Also, um, we are paying attention research on standards. I think the standard um, can uh, research for the several uh, direction. The one is the uh, products co coding standard, and also for the uh, RFID uh, communication and prot protocol, and also RFID product standard, and the equipment standard, and also for the application standard. For example, if we want to use in the post office, we must uh, make sure um, what kind of uh, the, um, the 
um, which the uh, position you can put it put it put on, and uh, what the frequency you want to use it, and also for the different uh, industry area, we must uh, make decision uh, what kind of frequency you can use it. So, for example, for the medicine pills, so where you can put it in the in the, the bottle, so. We must make a lot of application standards. This is very important, I think. And also, we established some uh, the testing and the certification center. We are set up the uh, National Testing Center on FID technology. So, one of them, they will test the, the product's uh, performance. And also, we uh, Evaluate the RFID products and uh, simulate application environments and uh, assess the applications. For example, I say, say that the, we're using the uh, cold manner, the tricking system. We may, maybe we want to use the uh, active tag. In the, in the normal surrounding, maybe they can transfer the information more than 100 meter. But when take place the accident, the coal will fall down. So in this kind of situation, how long they can transfer the information? So this is must uh, simulate in the, the labor. Also, um, the, uh, we uh, pay more attention to the tax. We uh, set up the, uh, some research prog um, project for example, we are researched the UHF chips and the UHF antenna design and also tech integrate with the other sensor technology and also um, pay more attention to packaging. And uh, in the reader, we are also research some UHF reader and the UHF reader antenna design and also active FID technology. Um, for the research network uh, architecture and uh, product name service system for supply chain management, and also we support the uh, planning to set up local products name service system on the China domestic supply chain environment, which could map the um, the synchronize the data with the other name system, for example, the OS system. So carry out the international uh, collaboration with the all kind of the organizations, such as the uh, standard committee and the research um, academy, also for the uh, some big company or some foreign uh, government. So I think this uh, we are open the door to want to cooperation with the different uh, partner um, based on their women cooperation. So I think this is a big issue, not only useful for China to develop their technology, and also I think must uh, cooperation uh, um, with their every, every organization or every country. They can do more best to reduce the cost and also develop the next generation the technology, make the, the chips more cheap, and also for the tax, they also reduce the cost. So I think this is a big issue, so we must cooperate each other. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zhang. And now for a different perspective from Europe, uh, we're very privileged to have uh, uh, Peter Fries, who is the uh, DG Information Society and Media Network and Communications Technologies, ICT for Enterprise Networking, Director for Europe, and, and is actually one of the principal funders of uh, some programs that you've already heard about, including the uh, PROMISE program that, that, that was introduced yesterday. Thank yes. you, Peter. I put it here or? Oh, no, it's fine. Okay. So, let's find this. I'll just take my paper. 
Well, perfect. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks a lot to Steve and, and John to have the opportunity to talk today on behalf of the European Commission. It was quite a long journey anyhow to come over, and it was for me the last the last time I've been to the States was is uh, 26 years ago. So, <laughs> and then I have been to California. So it's first time to be the New England States. Well, I would like to present you briefly the pers European perspective on RFID. I am working in um, public administration at the European Commission. I am sure that you are familiar how the Commission works. We are a supranational body. And we have no ministries, but we have a lot of director generals. And each director general has a commissioner. And um, when yesterday Tang told about the 30 models on pedigree, this reminded me quite well of our work because we have always 25 member states and depending on the subject we have a very, let me say, um, good direct power or we are more working on a basis of, of being a facilitator. So, and for RFID I think it's uh, between both. Um, I'm working on research administration which means that basically the European, European Commission is not um, executing research on its own apart from some specialized institutes. Um, we are always commissioning in the work or in the frame of some framework programs uh, research. And um, what we try always is, of course, in terms of speeding up Europeans, uh, Europe's competence and competitiveness to facilitate the right research issues and at the same time to ensure that um, the, the results of the research are going to be taken up afterwards. And there, quite often, Europe has some weaknesses. So basically, what we try to do, as I do, uh, did to yesterday and to today, is to learn and to see what should be, uh, where should we proceed in terms of the future of uh, RFID um, research. Um, so I'm chuckling around about uh, an inter-service working group we established last year on RFID, on international collaboration, European research on RFID, topics of RFID discussion as you see it in Europe today, and next steps. Well, what happens quite often is in public administration that depending on the application cases, a topic pops up in different, um, different uh, administrations. And for example, there is the topic of standardization, RFID and frequency. It's about um, customs issues. It's about enterprise cooperation, supply chain management. And then we discovered actually last year that we should um, realign our forces and should go for a coherent approach. So actually 12 director general um, then since then try to work together. And actually my head of unit is um, the coordinator and my colleague from and myself, we are managing this um, inter-service working group which is quite promising and seems to be a good um, opportunity, a good um, action for Europe. Actually what we want to do is of course go for a horizontal coordination of activities in RFID in Europe try to cooperate with national authorities and standardization bodies as it has to do a lot with aligning, I would say, efforts and standards and provision of ground for international cooperation. Of course, we see that um, Europe, as all the big uh, economic zones, tries to be one of the leading ones, but still, as RFID is a global issue, we have to always go for a global cooperation. And I give you some exp examples. We had quite some contacts with uh, Dan Capio from the Department of Commerce. There was uh, recently the EU as uh, Information Society Dialogue, and one major issue was RFID. There are informal discussions since uh, last year, and there was attendance for us on a um, Department of Commerce workshop. Last week, our Commission Reading uh, visited uh, China, so there was a contact with the European Ministry, of, sorry, with the China Ministry of Science and Technology. We cooperate uh, with the OECD and we have as well a transatlantic uh, consumer dialogue. Um, what we normally do in Europe is apart from national research programs that we have so-called multi annual framework programs which are like some sort of some big machineries that based on extensive stakeholder discussion consultation we're going to develop specific uh, research subjects which then are updated each um, two years. And as you can see that we do quite a lot on uh, RFID research uh, since 10 years. 
difference between project and funding is that uh, this is always a collaborative funding. So we normally ask the participants, which means um, research institutes and um, companies, to contribute uh, 50, up to 50 percent of um, of the project budget to to carry out the work. Um, this figure gives you only an idea on, on European level, and a part of this, I think, you can uh, easily double this. Is that we have all, of course, in different member states, national um, research. And what we try since some years is to go for so-called European research area, which means that we try to coordinate better European and um, nationwide research. And I think it starts to work. Just to give you a, a glance on the topics we cover, it's a very colorful pie, and it shows actually that it goes really from supply chain management, e-government, justice, liberty, and freedom. I'm just picking up some smart devices, goes into nanotechnology. So there's really a big uh, bundle and a bunch of a, um, diverse subjects all dealing around on, on RFID. What we see today on, as typical topics in Europe is in terms of the application areas, we see supply chain, logistics uh, on the forefront. We see product life cycle, after sales service, intelligent maintenance. maintenance. <clears throat> we see uh, health is a very important issue, and to some extent as well, inclusion, which means how can we help um, elder and disabled people, people with additional needs, to participate in a modern society. In particular, as you notice, that Europe always try or has give a gives a special emphasis on uh, so-called social coherence and, and inclusion. In terms of research and development, it's basically about tech reader hardware, it's about smart sensors, it's about software applications, it's about nanomaterials. Interoperability and standards, uh, basically frequencies, data structures, and tag interrogation. And particularly on this, in terms of frequency, of course, we have to harmonize uh, frequency spectrums for RFID usage in 25 member states, and um, there we are on good track. We gave as well a particular emphasis on RFID governance, which means rules and procedures, competition, robustness in terms of um, object naming services and discovery services, as we see this as um, a very important issue, and we want, of course, to have um, no, let me say, incumbent power, so we would like to go to her for some a mixture between an open and competitive approach. Privacy and data protection is, of course, high on the political agenda, and as well, all the security issues around RFID. What we see as well is uh, our RPI-free standards, intellectual property rights, international trade, health, the environment, identity theft, ethical aspects, I think, are going to become very important and what we see as well as labor practices. So we try to have a, a look that um, usage of RFID might have some impact on uh, not only negative, but might have impact, of course, on labor forces. And perhaps we do have to, to act as well besides some technical, technological development um, to provide some measures. I give you here uh, some typical examples uh, <clears throat> what we try to do on European research in RFID, and I'm proud that in two projects we have outdoor D-Labs included. For example, Professor Fleisch is participating as well, I think it's even the, the MIT, and as part of the bridge project in which uh, APC Global and GS1 organizations are going to participate. So what you see, for example, apart from supply chain management, it's really about um, using RFID to go for a let me say, a better customer service apart from just providing the right product at the right time and the right um, shelf or display. It's really to say how could we use um, data to um, save resources and improve customer service. I think uh, RFID solution for global environment bridge is really to say that in seven application sectors from some sort of a European perspective in a global wide um, frame, um, the GS1 organizations say, uh, would like to, to drive um, the rollout of um, APC Global. Yesterday we talked as well about um, anti-counterfeiting solutions, it's very important. And for example, another exa um, <coughs> important issue is the uh, 
quality of food, so traceability of, of livestock. There was um, some scandal on, 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 um, on meat some years ago, so there's some sort of uh, sensibility and awareness in Europe to have good food and life quality. Perhaps what we see as well, it's not only that we see RFID in itself, we try to see it in a, in a broader context, which is apart from saying it's the Internet of Things, that we say uh, tomorrow the world will be networked and, and, and consisting of a lot of intelligent products and uh, objectives. In this case, of course, we have to go for different um, business models, different development processes, new um, ways of cooperation of suppliers and after service, uh, sorry, after sales service providers. I think it's about um, a very robust, robust and safe IT and, and network infrastructure as the network will be the major backbone uh, to uh, facilitate uh, the existence of all these intelligent objectives. And I think, of, of course, it's how in a world of increasing complexity, which, uh, where and how we should use intelligent machines to handle, um, to handle all data and information, which I think it would be more and more difficult for human beings to cope with the increasing amount of data and information. What we see this year is um, very important from European perspective as far as RFID is concerned. We are going to shape the next uh, framework program. It's the FP7, which is going to start in 2007. <coughs> Furthermore, <coughs> we try to provide orientation for stakeholders. We talked a lot to Intel, APC Global, Verisign, consumer organizations. And apart from the idea that there is or is not uh, the need for some regulations, regulation, we see that um, Quite often it's a question of orientation, saying what would be a good practice or on, on, on what should we conclude to go, to go ahead. And for this we try to uh, carry out as part of a public consultation five important workshops where we try to invite relevant stakeholders to come up with ideas how we should go on, what should be uh, in terms of regulation but all, and well, as well in terms of, um, let me say, solutions. Um, definitions what should be a good way for Europe to go forward in the balance between uh, being competitive and at the same time try to, um, to stick to European uh, values as we try always to, to carry them on. Um, as I said as well, um, we think that we, at the end of the year we could have some ideas about political action in order to, to drive uh, the usage of RFID. Um, I would like to invite you, if you're anyhow in Europe, or try to come over. We're going to have two important workshops soon. One is called From RFID to the Internet of Things. It's more about sensor networks and ideas we discussed yesterday. So I would invite you to come over to participate in this uh, workshop. Or one week earlier is uh, the slightly enhanced perspective. It's about ambient intelligent technologies to enhance the product life cycle, which goes more towards the idea um, of network and intelligent uh, objectives and further research needs. And of course, we try to take this <coughs> to um, get the ideas and to fill up the next uh, work programs, which then, of course, later on will lead to call for tenders. And um, then, of course, we would like to invite you to participate. And last word to say it's basically European research, but there are a lot of uh, mechanisms to going for international cooperation, which uh, Asia, China, and uh, the US. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Our, our next speaker is a, a colleague from the Auto ID Labs at ICU in uh, Seoul, Korea. His name is uh, Dayong Kim, and he is a uh, uh, his talk is on the evolvable network of tiny sensors, otherwise known as ANTS, and the Hanra Mountain Disaster Management Program, which we gather is a, one of the flagship programs in Korea. Uh, thank yeah, you. thank you. And Thanks, Adi.
Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank you also uh, Boston. You know, the Boston gave me a gift uh, you know, the, yesterday. Uh, it's cold. You know, <laughs> I just called the call. So without cold, you know, the, my, my, or, actually, my original voice is much worse than this. You know, thank, you. thank you, Boston. <laughs> Uh, my, you know, the uh, talk topic is a little different, you know, from original RFID. You know, uh, I'm more interested in, you know, the sensor network, and uh, so uh, actually, the ANTS is uh, the project, you know, that I have been carried out in the last four years, and uh, the ANTS aimed for, you know, some uh, public sensor network. You know, we would like in Korea, we would like to deploy sensor network in, you know, in the nation, like uh, uh, internet. Internet is, uh, you know, the now worldwide, right? So uh, that's a public sensor network. Without public sensor network, you know, the, we, we, we cannot, the companies and government, you know, the uh, organization cannot, you know, the share the, you know, the sensor information. So we need some, you know, standardization of a sensor network. That's a uh, public sensor network. Also, uh, there are another uh, research topic, you know, that that's the uh, EPC sensor network, you know. The, uh, actually, you already know that, you know, the EPC, you know, the auto idle labs already planned, you know, to develop EPC class two, three, four, and five, you know. Actually, class four tech is uh, ad hoc active uh, tech. That's uh, very similar to the, you know, the sense network. So, uh, uh, actually, this is not a new topic, so this is a reservable topic, so I'd like to propose, you know, to uh, research it more on EPC sensor network. Uh, this is the contents, you know, that I'd like to talk today. The first one is uh, the ubiquitous sensor network, you know. The, uh, that's uh, some uh, new terminology. Uh, uh, actually, this uh, was named by the Minister of, Minister, of, Minister of Information and Communication in Korea. He is uh, uh, Dr. Zin. He is a former CEO of Samsung Electronics. Uh, I would like to, you know, the, uh, define ubiquitous sensor network first, and then ANTS, and also if it's sensor network, uh, will be described. Uh, ubiquitous sensor network actually, you know, includes uh, passive uh, RFID tags and active tags, and also some sensor tags and the sensor network. So uh, actually, at least, uh, you know, the, we consider uh, four different types of tags. The first one is, uh, uh, EPC, you know, the passive RFID network. As you know, text, readers, and all bunches of, you know, the uh, EPC network middlewares uh, are for the EPC uh, RFID uh, network architects. And uh, the second one is active text. We use a battery to lengthen the radio ranges. Uh, this is some examples uh, from the company Savi. You know, the using UHF, we can uh, achieve, you know, the uh, more than 100 meters of radio range. Uh, that's active tax. And uh, the third one is uh, uh, smart active label or a, a sense tag. Here, you know, the, we put uh, some batteries and also sensors in very, you know, thin, you know, tag. So that's a smart active label. You know, there are also semi uh, uh, smart active labels and smart active rail, uh, labels uh, in this type. And the, the final one is, you know, the, the sensor uh, network. You know, the sensor network is uh, what, what a network of sensor nodes. And each sensor node has a microcontroller. So it has uh, computation uh, capabilities, capabilities and also uh, active wireless communication capability. And lots of, you know, different types of sensors. If they are deployed, uh, then they, you know, the self configure They form an ad hoc network, right? So we can cover some large area, of, uh, large areas with the sensor network. So, uh, you know, so so far, you know, the, there were, you know, the RFID research community, development community, and also there are ma many people are uh, working in sensor network areas. Very, you know, hot topics. So. <clears throat> I think uh, wishing, you know, the RFID people and sense network people should meet together and then find, you know, the more, you know, the different or advanced, you know, types of business model. So, ubiquitous sense network, uh, we, we define, you know, the, uh, actually, uh, you can see uh, uh, in the uh, right-hand side, uh, uh, we call it uh, BCN, Broadband Convergence Network. That's uh, some, you know, high-speed uh, internet. Uh, it also includes some, you know, the uh, cell phone networks and DMB network. That's a, some kind of a uh, legacy network. Uh, we would like to, you know, the include uh, 
passive RFID, active text, and all sensor text, and sensor network, and then we would like to uh, make it as a, some uh, public infrastructure. That's a ubiquitous uh, sensor network. So, uh, as uh, Sangu uh, told yesterday, you know, the uh, Korean government has uh, some uh, vision like uh, IT839. Actually, you know, the, the minister's car plate number is uh, A390, you know, okay. And the vice minister, Kev Gas, is A391, something like that, you know. So, the government, you know, the emphasize, you know, the all, you know, uh, this uh, IT839 strategy. And uh, we said, you know, three public infrastructure, uh, uh, that's a, one is a, a broadband convergence network, and the second one is this ubiquitous sensor network, including both passive RFID active attack sensor tech and sensor network. And then the last one is uh, IP version 6. <coughs> so that's, uh, you know, the, some uh, public infrastructure we would like to build in Korea. Uh, I'd like to, you know, the first uh, introduce uh, uh, my uh, current project. That's a, a, a some test for the public sensor networks. You know, uh, sensor network is, as I said, a very, you know, the popular, you know, the uh, uh, areas, and there are many people that are working on it. Uh, when I started uh, this project uh, four years ago, you know, I set uh, some uh, theme. You know, that's a uh, uh, evolvability. You know, uh, I envision that, you know, the uh, in the future, sensor network uh, we also, you know, the populate the globe, you know, like uh, currently internet does today. So, so the sensor network sh there are there will be many, you know, the sensor nodes. Like uh, there will be many uh, RFID tags in the world. So, uh, the lifetime of a sensor network will be also very long, five years, ten years, twenty years. Who knows, right? So. Uh, uh, after they are deployed, then uh, they will evolve. You know, sometimes, for example, uh, the mission is changed, so we have to uh, update the mission. Or some network, pro even you know, the network protocols and some you know the key components also can be changed. So, so, uh, so all the components of a sensor network, uh, from hardware, operating system, and network protocols, even you know the some. A location sensing protocol should have a capability of uh, some uh, evolvability. So to do that, uh, we have uh, developed uh, and you know the hardware and software platform. You know those are hardware and software. Maybe you know the similarly EPC class four tech uh, may have you know this kind of a software inside. Uh, from the bottom, actually we have uh, four types of hardware. The H1 is a very small sensor nodes. It can be attached to the, the switches or some uh, light, you know. And H2 is uh, more advanced, you know, the sensor nodes. It's, it's very similar to, you know, the Berkeley's uh, Mica 3, Motor 3. And H3 is uh, uh, actually uh, more advanced, you know, the sensor node. It has uh, sensors like uh, CCD cameras and something like that. And also it can have uh, some uh, image processing capability inside. And H4 is uh, uh, some base station and gateway to the uh, legacy network. It can be uh, compared to the uh, RFID leader in uh, our EPC network. Above the hardware layers, uh, we have uh, operating systems and uh, several different types of uh, you know, network stack, including Max and uh, network layers, and also securities and the time synchronization protocols, and also location sensing algorithms, and power management, and also some uh, middleware. So that's uh, the platform we have. Using uh, this platform, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, prototyped some systems, like uh, some uh, military reconnaissance system using uh, Amanda helicopters, and also you use uh, you know, the sensor network in the greenhouse, something like that. This is uh, the, uh, current you know, project what I'm carrying out in Korea. Uh, uh, if you, you know, the visit Korea, uh, actually this is uh, the uh, South Korea, and then uh, in southernmost uh, area we have uh, some big, you know, the fantastic island. Uh, it is called uh, Jeju Island. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the, the highest mountain in Jeju Island in Korea. It's uh, almost two kilometers high. Now we are deploying, you know, sensor networks in the trail of, uh, you know, this uh, mountain, Hala Mountain. Uh, uh, actually, it has uh, uh, four trails. Among four, we choose two. 
One is uh, uh, 4.7 kilometers long, the other one is uh, 3.1 kilometers long. So we deploy sensors every 100 meters, in some areas every 250 meters. And then we collect uh, the, you know, the weather information in, in real time, and then we uh, actually that collected information will be forwarded to the my university. Actually, it's uh, uh, 500 kilometers away from you know, the, this mountain. And then this collected information uh, uh, is going to be delivered to the, uh, some climbers, you know, the climber who carries a solar phone. Okay, so uh, they can uh, browse the weather information uh, in the trail. You know. I actually, you know, the, because this is two, kilo, two kilometers high mountain, you know, the weather varies a lot, you know. Uh, when we go to the mountain to test, uh, in, the, in the, you know, the Circle, uh, uh, we see the mountain, then it looks like a, a lane, okay? And then uh, I ask a student to buy a lane coat, and I climb. Then, you know, at that time, you know, the, uh, actually, my face and arm are all burned, you know. So, you know, the weather is, uh, you know, the very, very varying. And even, you know, the, I uh, arrived at peak, and then I saw people wet, you know. The, they took another, you know, the uh, trail. So, uh, this is very important for the climbers. So. This is a, one of our, you know, SenseNet products. So uh, this is some, you know, the pictures uh, I have taken in the uh, trial. And uh, this is currently installed in the uh, mountain. Actually, still we are in the development and the test. And uh, so that's, that's, that's for the, you know, the public ubiquitous sensor network. Actually, uh, I'm, I'm the chair of the uh, Korean uh, National Standards Committee for the public ubiquitous sensor network, you know. So we are trying to, you know, the standardize the uh, network protocols uh, and also network management protocol and something like that. And then, uh, actually, uh, we joined Autide Labs, you know, the, uh, last uh, April, and then we run, you know, the RFID stops, and then there are also uh, very interesting topics uh, here, you know. The, uh, actually, this is uh, uh, maybe drawn by uh, Elga, you know, the, uh, so uh, Autide Labs have, uh, you know, the three different uh, research, you know, the categories of, uh, from bottom, RF and chip design, uh, including uh, EPS class uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and networking and software, and uh, business and application, also, you know, the pri uh, privacy and security. Actually, uh, we have interest in uh, EPC uh, class uh, uh, 4. Okay, so maybe this class one it uses a gentle air interface, three may use the, uh, you know, the same interface, air interface, three, actually I don't know, maybe four. Four, uh, the, the air interface should be you know, changed, you know, the, we need a MAC protocol and also we need, you know, the add-on network protocol. So we have interest in, and we also, you know, the uh, analyze the, you know, the sensor net, uh, EPC network middleware, you know. Uh, to include, okay, <laughs> sorry. To include, you know, sensor tags and the sensor network, you know, the, also the middleware maybe should be, you know, the changed, modi modified, and added, and something like that. For example, uh, uh, ALE uh, and the little protocol, it has uh, some uh, filtering capabilities, right? So it can filter out some specific uh, EPC code. Uh, same, you know, the, for example, if we include sensors, then we can also filtering out uh, some uh, data which has, a, you know, sensor value within some range, something like that. So filtering, uh, also EPC as a repository, to we have to accommodate, you know, sensor information, and uh, EPC as discovery, we also have to use, you know, the sensor value, you know, for the discovery, something like that. So uh, I think this is also a very uh, great challenge, you know. So uh, this is uh, uh, the proposal, you know, that I'd like to propose in uh, this EPC Global Community, okay? Thank you very much. So, so by the way, the, the, the title of this session is, is Beyond the Supply Chain, right? So we talked about some of the range of applications down into the coal mines in China and then, and then in Europe uh, and uh, up in the mountains of Hanaro. Uh, and, and now we're privileged to have um, Ji Hee Yong, who is the Emerging Business Incubation Manager of the Technology Strategy Office 
of SK Telecom uh, in, in Korea, uh, who will share with us how, how they're extending RFID into the network. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, gentlemen. Uh, I am Jin Yoon from uh, SK Telecom, which has about 18 million mobile subscribers in Korea. Today, I would like to introduce the mobile applications for RFID technology currently planned by SK Telecom. First of all, let me briefly introduce SK Telecom to you. SK Telecom, uh, since its foundation in 1984, has been providing mobile communication service in Korea over 20 years. We commercialized the CDMA network in 1996 for the first time in the world. Uh, SK Telecom's wireless internet services are offered in two brands, Nate and June. Nate is a general wireless internet service, whereas June is a multimedia service based on CDMA eVideo network technology. SK Telecom's wireless internet services recorded an approximately record of 1.7 billion US dollar. The wireless internet service took up 20.6% of SK Telecom's entire revenue which increased by threefold in the last three years. The current growth momentum is expected to continue, but Korean mobile market is fast getting saturated. We must develop new growth opportunity now, and we think the mobile RFID application will be one of growth engines. We think we have found one solution, that is ubiquitous service based on convergence. Our customers desire personalized, customized services and more user-friendly devices. Such customer needs will spell an opportunity for operators to use as a new growth engine. This trend will be further accelerated by the interactions between drivers of convergence, while the convergence trend will present both opportunities and threats to telecom operators. It will undoubtedly bring about much enhanced value, values to our customers. I will explain the business strategy of SK Telecom. As you can see in the chart on the left, SK Telecom has recognized the convergence business as a new growth opportunity and is now stepping up its effort to find new business models. So far, we have presence in broadcasting, finance and commerce, content distribution, fixed line services and handset manufacturing businesses. In the future, we plan to expand our business into telematics and RFID. Terminals equipped with our DMB, finance and built-in cameras are sold on the market today, and the terminal equipped RFID leader will be introduced by this year. Next, I will explain the usage scenario of physical mobile RFID application. First, the user scans the RFID tag with the mobile terminal. This results in the RFID code being transform, transferred from the tag to the mobile terminal. The mobile terminal access the mobile network and ask the user to select the RFID service. RFID service then directs request for information to the RFID 
service platform consisting of object directory server, object traceability server, and object information server. These servers contain the necessary information about the tagged object from simple text information to audio video contents. This information is sent back to the mobile terminal. The user consumes this information and then the mobile terminal will send billing information to the mobile network operator. <clears throat> Future many kinds of sensors will be applied to various places to sensing the environment condition which information transmit and to data managing equipment through mobile network infra. We call it US environment which has the tremendous mobile business chance. Now we are trying to make a new kind of service with a mobile phone with a has RFID leader chip inside. This is the main concept of mobile RFID service or technology with the convergence between mobile phone and RFID. <clears throat> mobile RFID technology is a wireless technology that provides new valuable service to customers by integrating RFID infrastructure with mobile communication and wireless internet. We hope mobile RFID technology and the service would bring these four conditions. First one is creating new value for mobile phone users. Second one is building new markets. Third one is improving quality of ubiquitous life. And the last one is developing and leading technology and the standards with mobile RFID services using 900 megahertz RFID. I would like to introduce some examples of mobile RFID services. In this slide, you can see the information providing service. RFID tag is attached on bottles or cases of medicine, cover page of books, videotapes, etc. Using mobile phone, which has RFID leader chip inside, lead this RFID tag. In the network, there is some kind of server which provides content address. Mobile phone sends RFID tag ID or user text user data to this server. Then this server returns address of contents in response to RFID tag ID to mobile phone. With this address, mobile phone can access contents server, which has contents for medicine, books, etc. These contents could be just a simple WAP, that is a wireless application protocol, page or multimedia data such as the preview of movie. Uh, product authentication is a very good example of RFID application. There is a strong demand for product authentication in used car market, food and drug industry, medical user, such as tracking broad supplies and almost all second-hand product markets. So at first, we developed the ginseng authentication service to detect the counterfeit product in domestic <coughs> Excuse me, and the international market using cellular global roaming function. Now these services started three shops and the one department store as a trial business. We use uh, the handheld terminal combining with the CDMA module and the RFID leader. These services uh, will launch commercially after verifying the performance. Mobile RFID technology can be applied to, for route guidance such as public transportation route and road guidance. In leisure and lifestyle area, it can be used for route guidance, nature experience, promotional events, and for shopping, banking, applications, and so on. SK Telecom will start a trial experience for these businesses within this year and plan to do more business case for commercial after trial. 
Actually, we draw plans about 200 different service models that will be commercial business targeting for our mobile customers. Every the major area of RFI technology is in information downloading applications. The flower sales show is a very good showcase for such a purpose. Uh, scanning RFI text on plants and flowers, we can get information of flowers like name, place, and the history of origin, blooming time, medical treatment, as well as download of related pictures and the songs to mobile handset and combine with the promotion events. If customer requests the delivery of items for sale with mobile phone with a, as a gift, we can send the favorite song and the message with it by reading RFID tag on flowers. Shops and the restaurants are also perfectly well suit, suited for deploying RFID technology to enhance value for customers. Tags attached to the entrance and or table scan of RFID tag with a mobile phone and then mobile phone display the contents. Users can access the contents very easily, then download information about the restaurant, record their favorite page at their own site. A businessman of a shop needs to promote their product and record their information on mobile phone. Also, customer can needs to decide the menu for lunch or dinner for specially. This service is good mobile business because our customer desire personalized and customized services and more user-friendly access. <coughs> RFID-based road information service can be made into a whole platform for providing all types of route information service. RFID technology can use location determination where it cannot fulfilled by GPS technology such as inside of buildings and could ultimately be cheaper once tech prices decline. Customers can get the route guidance, the early store location, location maps, and the building information very easily and simply. We expect these services can increase the mobile data access traffic. Pole is sometimes very troublesome work. If the pole company can send the reward like a free mobile phone bell sound download, purchasing coupons, so then customers can do it willingly. Users touch the RFID tag attached on the bus stops, subway advertisement board, and to download the poll information on their mobile terminals. A taxi is not always a safe place for women at night. Safe return home service uses RFID technology to track taxis in case of theft and any other unpleasant experience a passenger may experience. A passenger can read the tag ins installed in the taxi on the ceiling, under the seat, or under the driver registration card. Then taxi company send the information about the taxi to the passenger. Passenger can send those information to their parents or friends using the mobile shown message service, pressing just the send button on mobile phone. Finally, I think Customers are always the most critical element in our business. I believe that RFID can derive the success factors and get insight to the future direction operators must take. If we study these issues from the customer's perspective, which enhance customer values and improve user friendliness, we will seek continuous technology innovation to get the most optimal service environment. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? If there are, if you could come down to the mic, please.
And once again, thanks very much to our, our uh, speakers who have come from halfway around the world. If they're, if they're, oh. Hi, I'm Matthew Dorfman from MIT, and I have two questions for Mr. Yoon. <laughs> um, first, there are several different protocols that have been discussed for mobile RFID applications. NFC is probably the most well-known, but there's also something called r to r and I think there are a few others. So my first question is, which of those do you see being the choice of SK Telecom, or is it too soon to tell? Uh, yes, SK Telecom consider the uh, several technologies like uh, NFC, RFID, or GP, and many things. When we compare the NFC and RFID, nine, 900 megahertz RFID, uh, NFC has the many uh, dedicated functions like the security and the uh, many uh, uh, safe, safe functions. So that uh, cheap, uh, the, the tag is the more expensive than the 900 megahertz tags. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, NFC needs the very short uh, distance, leading distance, but uh, RFID tag is the uh, longer distance. Mm -hmm. So we selected the 900 megahertz uh, RFID for u useful things, okay. and also we will start the NFC service at the uh, pay or uh, tickets. Okay. So you would use the NFC service for payment for tickets? We also? prepared now. Okay. So yes. this would sort of replace the Moneta program that you have had, or would it just be an extension of the Moneta program? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Well, uh, thank you. So thank you very much to the panel. Thank you.